Hey guys, Ultra Steel here, and we're continuing the Legend of Zelda on the Wind Waker HD. So in the last part, we went ahead and got all the treasure shards, uh, looked at, and we got all the treasures from them, so that's pretty good. And we got pretty much, um, you know, everything. Oh, well, that's all the shards, so I can keep going, but, you know, I want to continue our, with our quest. So now we are on Diamond Step island and this is the island where you will need to get a special item in order to get uh to the ghost ship which holds the final triforce shard that we're looking for and in order to get onto this island you need the hook shot so yeah there's gonna be a lot of things you need in order to find that last triforce shard so here we go and what's interesting about this island is that it's also shaped like a ship. So that's pretty cool. Just check, just check it out. Amusing indeed. Well, not amusing, but interesting. I believe there's a true jelly on here. I always have to get one of you guys. I can just feel where you are. So yeah, in this episode I'm going to be discussing the lore about the ghost ship and how mysterious it is. So hooray, let's see how we can find this blasted ship. It's always been a mystery. Merman has always been talking about it. We've encountered it across the Great Sea and just disappears. So first thing is you're going to see these jars and they're going to be transporting you in different places. So this is going to be like a little maze, and you also want to watch out for floor masters too, because they can be a pain. Yeah. So make sure you equip your fire arrows out so you can get in these things, because some wood will seal it off occasionally. So yeah, the ghost ship. Uh, Lenzo on uh, Windfall Island spoke of this strange phenomena. He said that, like, um, some sailor uh, tried to make a map that led to the ghost ship, but once he was finished uh, doing that map, he, mis he died a mysterious death. So that's really creepy. And... I think that exact map is what we need to look for in order to help us find this ghost ship. Because even Lenzo tried to, you know, find this thing. And right when he saw it, it just disappeared once, you know, dusk arrived or sunrise. This ghost ship does not like to appear during the day. Just making that clear now. Ooh. So for now, let's see. I believe it's this one. Oh, that's wrong. The good thing about um, checking uh, which ones are right and which ones are wrong is the ones that have already been like uh, cleared of the wood that's on top of them, or that was like you know covering them up. Those ones. Uh, that have already been like cleaned of the wood that you burnt off. Those ones are the ones you already went to, so the ones you haven't went to are the ones that still need to, you know, get the passageway uh, unblocked off. You get what I mean. I work mean, things very differently, or very weird. So, my instincts tell me it's... We really like this atmosphere, it's all these ships here. That light. The wheel over there. It's so interesting. So we're gonna take this path, let's see where it takes us. Alright! Looks like we arrived. Watch out for this wall master though. Or wall master. That can easily get you off guard, because if they get you, then you have to start this whole maze all over again, and it can be quite annoying. It's kind of weird how they don't do any damage, though. 
But this is it, folks. This is what we have been looking for. The item that will help us find that ghost ship. Let's see what's inside. You got the ghost ship shark. Check your shards on the map screen to view it. Alright. So, I'm going to explain what this chart does in a second. Also, make sure uh, when you start looking for this ship, uh, make it nighttime. You'll see why in a second. So, let me get off this island, even though it's so beautiful. And they really would love to live here. Or probably not, because then I would not have any food. But, anyways. So, let's make it nighttime. Alright, and now that it's nighttime, we're gonna look at that shark that we just got. This is it. So open it up. And it'll basically show you which islands uh, that are inhabited by the ghost ship during certain phases of the moon. For example, the this crescent moon that's shining blue, uh, that's gonna be on... Uh, what's that one island? It's it looks very familiar, but you can just go back to your map and try and pinpoint which island it is. So basically, shows you which island it's currently on uh, during the night, depending on the phase of the moon. For example, right now it's that phase of the moon. So we're gonna check the map and let's see. It is on Five Star Isles. Yep. Double check. That seems pretty accurate. Alright, so we're gonna go to Five Star Isles. Oops. So I'll meet you guys there. I'm gonna warp to Forest Haven and then just head uh, east or southeast from there. Alright. So it's on this island, so we're gonna head southeast. Oops, wrong way. Here we go. Alright, and we're approaching the island. As well as that ghost ship. There it is, guys! There's the ghost ship! Man. Pretty interesting. It's even causing these barks around me in real life to bark. That's how spooky it is. So once you get the ghost ship chart, uh, that's when you can actually go inside of it. If you do not have the ghost ship chart, you cannot go inside it. So wish me luck, guys. Ah! Oh my. Here we go. There's gonna be some enemies around here. You can horrify the moth. Just look up look at the floor. It's like souls or something. It's pretty spooky. There's a Poe right there. Just wanna admire the atmosphere first before I take down these guys. And I believe if you position the camera right. Well, maybe I can't do it right now, but. I believe in the GameCube version, there's like different, uh, there's differences in the atmosphere of the ghost ship, so I'll get into that very soon. So take care of you. Yeah, that, you want to beat that whiz rope first, otherwise if you just let it um, summon stuff, it's going to summon the re-dead, and that's going to be kind of annoying if you're not careful, so just make sure you take care of that re-dead first. So as I was saying, there should be a way to see, uh, like usually in the GameCube version, or I think it's only the GameCube version, you can see like souls, like, outside of the ghost ship through like the cracks and the damages in it. It's pretty freaky. 
So here's the chest that you can get. This is where the final Triforce shard is. But uh, notice that there's a face right there. Pretty interesting. Uh, don't get that chest yet. Make sure you get these, this treasure because once you get that chest, well, oh, I won't spoil anything. But just make sure you get the treasure first and anything else from here. So first, something I want to note before I get it. In the GameCube version, when you get closer to this uh, face thing on the wall, as you get closer in the GameCube version, it gets more... It turns into like this demonic smiley face. And it's just really eerie and creepy. So in this version, I guess they took it out for some reason. I really loved it. But without further ado, let's get that final Triforce shard. Here we go. Alright, got a Triforce shard. So right when I press A, get a load of this. That's really spooky. I don't even know how that happened. But... We finally did it. We completed the Triforce of Courage. Well done, Link. With the shards you have collected, the Triforce of Courage is now complete at last. We must make for Hyrule. Quickly. Uh, yeah, we, we, we could do it quickly, but there's still a side quest that I want to do. Because as you may have noticed, we have one more piece of heart that we need to get. And for that last heart container we will make, that will make the final heart out of the 20 hearts in this game. So, before we go back to the Tower of the Gods and, uh, you know, further the story, we're gonna go back to the Forest Haven. Because remember those, uh, dried up trees that we would see, uh, throughout some of the islands? out there in the ocean well oh and don't forget there was also like Koroks next to those dry trees we're gonna try and uh unwither them and you know sprinkle some water on them because if you go ahead and you you know make sure that those trees get plenty of water uh you'll be able to get a piece of heart from clearing all of them so i'm gonna go ahead and do that side quest right now I just feel like I'll be more interesting, but anyways. You are a punk! Come here. I've been through so much and you just had to do that. What's wrong with you? So yeah, um... The thing is that you can't use normal spring water. Or you can't use just normal water. It has to be uh, spring water from the Great Dacre Tree. So you can't even use the water that's like right here outside. It has to be like right from inside the forest haven. Otherwise, it won't count. I'm explaining this now because it's very important. Another thing, the water itself from the forest haven, in the GameCube version, it's it's time. It, it has a time limit until it goes bad and becomes normal water. In the GameCube version, it's 20 minutes. Uh, and then it just becomes plain water, and it won't work for those trees that you're trying to save. But in the Wii U version, HD version of this game, basically that I'm playing right now, they bumped it up to 30 minutes, so that is pretty good. So I recommend you have the fast sail in this game just to help speed up the process uh, before the water goes bad. And you use those warp points from the Ballad of the Gales to your advantage, because it will help a lot. Another thing is, is that in order to find those Koroks and where those trees are, you know, among the Great Sea, make sure you talk to the Koroks out there first, you know, see see what's up with the trees, and then talk to the Great Dacre Tree, because the Great Dacre Tree is going to help list where they are, so that way you can pinpoint where they are and know where you're going and, you know, water them. So we're gonna talk to him about them. Tell me about the Koroks. The island Koroks. Are you concerned about the little Koroks who left the safety of our forest haven? It is indeed true that there are many islands on the Great Sea that have grown dark and dangerous. Who knows what perils might what might 
children. But it's not too much to ask, Link. Please offer my children assistance should their needs become dire. Can I count on you to check on them for me as you proceed with your quest? I trust their care to you. Is there anything else you wish to ask? Tell them about the forest water. So you have learned the secret of our forest haven. The forest water is a mystical and powerful drought, drought that fills the trees with life and vitality. With such water, it could even be possible to return alive to a battered, withered tree. And yet, the forest water is quickly spoiled by the air outside the forest haven. Once it leaves the borders of these woods, it will lose its potency after 30 minutes and become no ordinary, or no different from ordinary water. I suppose it is thanks to such water that this gnarled old tree has been able to live for so many long years. If you see the Koroks in trouble out there, I hope you can aid them with the while the forest water remains potent and shall mark their locations on your sea chart. Alright, so if you check your sea chart, he well, he's supposed to mark the place. So what we're gonna do is we're going to I'm going to take out fairy. Or better yeah, I'll take out my electric suit. Just that way it's easier for me to refill it. Okay, so remember, you have to use the forest water inside the forest haven. You cannot uh, get normal water or the water that's like outside the forest haven. Like, outside right here has to be inside. So I'm just clarifying that now. So now that we have the Korok's locations marked, see they... There's like these symbols right here, has their uh, the Korok symbol on them. So it shows you where they are. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, go save their trees. So I think the first island we're gonna go to is east from here. So this is one of the reasons why I've been uh, saving this quest for like the end. Because like, a lot of those islands we would explore just trying to restore their trees. I don't want it to, I don't want to like uh, be busy doing side quests uh, while trying to also do that side quest revolving saving the trees because then uh, you know I might run out of time with the time limit on the water. So that's why I wanted to like do all the side quests uh, first so that way I could just uh, speed on by and do everything quickly. You know, without any you know, trouble. I think if we, hmm, I think if we no, we can't use the hook shot. See, so yeah, I'm just gonna go over there really quick. I'm gonna skip ahead. I'm gonna take that little path over here. All right, so here we are. So just take out the water and s sprinkle it onto the tree. All right. So let's quickly get back to our yeah. boat. And go to the next island. I should decide I'm just gonna keep skipping to each one that I water. So the next one is uh, going to be west of Southern Fairy Island. So I'll see you guys there. Okay, so that last island that we were on that had the tree, it was Cliff, Pla Cliff Plateau Isles. So on this one, we are on Shark Island. And here's the tree. So let's go to the next island. All right, the next one is at Great Fish or Great Fish Isle. I know I, was, I know I said I was gonna go with this one, but I think it's just better if I go with this one first. It's on top of this swirly island. Alright, so the next one is that Needle Rock Isle. So we're at Link's Oasis, and this is the other one that we got water. Alright, so we are at Eastern Fairy Island. This is the next one. And the next one we're gonna go, we're gonna go to is 
mother and child isles. Don't warp here, because they'll warp you inside of the island. So you want to sail to over here and explore the outsides of the island. So don't warp there, just travel there from Tingle Island. It's our final trip. So here's Mother and Child Isles, that's the next one we gotta go to. Alright, and there's one more, and it's north from this island. Star Island, that's the final place, guys. Here's the final Korok. On Star Island. Here we go, guys. Our final piece of heart. And our last heart container. Swordsman, come see how healthy my forest tree has become. Wow, I'm so happy. Thank you so much. I'm so happy too. We got all 20 hearts. Sweet. All right, so we got all 20 hearts and we got all the treasure shards. All the shards pretty much. Um, Looks like I'm pretty much 100% of the game. I just have to take care of the final mission. Which is that Tower of the Gods and see what's going on with you know Zelda and Ganondorf and you know just finish the game but other than that you pretty much complete everything. Uh, I could get uh, two more items. Yeah I'll, I'll show those off. Two more items from a uh, beetle. You know the salesman. They're, they're optional items and they're not that important. Um, I might as well show you. I'll, I'll skip to when I get them. But basically you have to keep buying enough items to apply for a membership in order to get these items. For example, the first membership, which is the silver membership, uh, you need to get 30 points. And for each point you get is for each item you buy. And the second membership is gold membership and that's the second item you get so I'm gonna skip ahead until I buy enough from this guy okay so we got 26 points we need four more so I'm just gonna keep buying until I get enough points to reach 30 Oh, you saved up 30 points. You've earned a silver silver membership. We give a luxurious gift to all of our silver members. It's the least we can do. I'll send it to you shortly. It should be arriving at a post box near you any day. Promise me you'll wait anxiously for it. Next, try to earn our gold membership. All right, so we're gonna try and uh, get that next. So I'm gonna keep buying stuff from him. All right, so that is 60 points. Oh, you saved up 60 points. You earned a gold membership. To you, our latest gold member, Beetle's Shop Ship offers a fabulous gift. It will be arriving soon at a red post box near you. I hope you'll wait it anxiously. And on top of that, most special of gifts, you'll be treated as a VIP in our store. Okay. So as far as being VIP, I don't know what that means, but. Let me see. Thank you. Okay, so being VIP doesn't really do anything. Doesn't reduce the prices of anything. So we're gonna go to, the, to an island and check those two items that we got from those memberships. Alright, so we're here at Windfall. Make sure the day has passed by one day. Or a time has passed by one day. Let's get our two items that we got from Beetle. Ugh, fine. Pay stupid fee. 
Known as the Silver Membership Holders. Thank you for your frequent patronate, patronage of Beetle Shop Ships. Since you have earned 30 points, you have a, been granted Silver Membership. All Silver Memberships holders, holders receive a special gift of one complimentary ID. It is valid at all Beetle Shop Ships, so bring it to a shop ship near you. I look forward to your future patronage. Beetle. Patronage. Whatever. You got the complimentary ID. Who knows what this is, but apparently you should take it to Beetle. And the other item is... To all gold membership holders. Thank you so much for your very... For your continued patronage of Beetle Shop Ships. It has come to my attention that you have earned 60 shopping points. This entitles you to gold membership in my stores. All gold membership holders will receive a special gift of one fill-up coupon that fills your stock of items. When you find yourself running low on items, bring this coupon to your nearest Beetle Shop Ship for an instant fill-up. Does not apply to all products. Beetle. Alright, so ba this basically, it will fill every item you have to the max. Give it to Beetle, but remember, it doesn't cover all of its products. So I think it, I think it means like, for, for example, um, bombs and arrows and I'm assuming bait, you know, like all-purpose bait and yoy pears. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna go to his shop ship and see what that complimentary ID is all about. So as you can see, these rewards aren't really worth it. I just want to show this off because it's kind of a, it's like one of the biggest scams in Zelda history. Because you don't really get anything too cool from this. It's really pathetic. So I really hope you didn't do this along with me, unless you're like very curious for the curiosity. <laughs> so let's uh, let's see that curiosity or that compliment. <laughs> you want to use your complimentary ID? Sure. Okay, here it goes. You are so great, absolutely fantastic, incredible. And there you go. Isn't it nice to be complimented once once in a while? It is, isn't it? So that's it pretty much. What does this do? Would you like to use your fill up coupon? Ready? Instant item fill up! Be happy! That's pretty lame. You didn't even fill out my bait bag, you jerk. So yeah, it's pretty disappointing and I think I'm going to... I'm going to do what many others have done to your ship. Just wait for a sec. Die. 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 And die. Well, one more thing. Die. Alright, so yeah, I pretty much wrapped up and got everything 100%. I got all the shards, all the items from... You know, beetle, all the heart pieces, hero's charm, you know, the key items. So, yeah, now we're just gonna go to the Tower of the Gods and have our final battle. Make sure you get prepared, equip two fairies, uh, fill up your potions and bottles, or fill up your bottles with potions, blue potions, preferably, and lecture soup, all that good jazz, because get prepared. Because the next episode will be the finale. And I might do a second episode as a two-parter. Two-part finale. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys next time. I will meet you at the Tower of the Gods. So thank you guys for watching. Take care, peace, and have a good night. And we are so close to beating this. Just like Ocarina of Time. See you later.